Is it time to change the oil in your Kia? Doing it yourself is easier than you think and it will save you a bunch of money. Welcome to You Can Fix Anything. Today, I'm gonna to be changing the oil in this 2014 Kia Rio. And I do wanna mention in the beginning that um, if you have this four cylinder engine in your Kia, the steps are gonna be exactly the same. Um, in fact, all the principles I talk about in this video apply to all different makes and models. I'm feeling a little bit conflicted today because my hat ran through the washing machine and also I'm wearing a K-State t-shirt. Uh, but I've graduated from both schools, so I think that's okay. As you can see, I have my floor jack and jack stands ready to put this up in the air. But before I get started, I do want to touch on something. These Kias have developed a very bad reputation of the engines going bad. And you can very quickly go from a car that's worth a few thousand dollars to one that only has scrap value at a few hundred dollars. And uh, that is always important to do your maintenance on your car, to change the oil regularly. On these Kias, it's critical. And so this is something you don't want to mess around with. You want to change it even more frequently than the manufacturer recommends. But in this case, uh, this is my daughter's car and she brought it to me for an oil change. And so I'm going to be getting that. And I just want to say I'm proud of her for thinking about changing the oil and not waiting until she faces problems. This is my first time changing the oil on her Kia. And I'm saying I'm not loving it even this early on because there is no central jacking point under the car here. There's a mount all the way at the back of the engine. And unfortunately my jack is too tall to reach that. So I'm going to have to jack that up from the side and just worked in a little bit of tight space. I have the jack and the jacking point under the car. I do have the emergency brake set, so there's no risk of rolling. Unfortunately, my garage is out of commission, so I'm gonna be working in the dirt today. Now that I have the Kia up in the air, I do wanna say I appreciate the fact that they put the drain plug in the front. They put the oil filter in a really accessible spot. They didn't cover all of this with plastic shielding. I mean, it may have been originally, but there's nothing there now. So that's kind of nice. And so I'm taking a 17 millimeter socket with a 3 8 breakover bar, just in case it's been over tightened and just knock this loose. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. I do have my oil pan under here. As this is draining, I do want to mention that um, most shops, or I should say a lot of shops will offer oil reclaiming service for free. And so, uh, what I usually do is I have an old oil jug that I'll drain this pan into and then um, carry that to the shop. You know, once, once I get a handful of those put together, carry those in and be able to have a good disposal place rather than jumping somewhere behind a building on the farm. Unlike the places that change the oil, the businesses, I usually let this drain for a few minutes just to where it gets to the point where it's about a, just a fast drip. And, um, you know, I looked at the oil and as you can see, it's dark, but it's not black. And so it's uh, definitely not gone past its prime. So I'll put that plug back in, retighten it. I'll put the torque specs in the description below for this because I know, you know, I'm an old mechanic. This used to be a two grunt torque spec and kids nowadays, they like to have the actual torque spec. So I'll do it my way here. All right there, one, two, that's it. Um, but I'll put the torque spec in the description below for all the younger folks. Now the oil strain, next thing we're gonna do is remove the filter. Now I, for one, hate Fram filters. I find that they um, are just difficult to get off. They stick really hard, which is why I have these big filter pliers um, because I find that the bands um, don't work as well. The cap type can be helpful. It's just there's different filter sizes. So the type that slip over like a cap to grip that, even sometimes those will collapse under that. And so um, as with all my videos, I will put uh, links in the description below for um, all the different types of oil filter wrenches, all the materials I use, supplies, parts that I use in this video, I'll put in the description below. If you uh, click the link and make a purchase, I will get a few pennies in my pocket and it will help motivate me to continue making videos like this. All right, let me find a place where I can get a good leverage on this. Now 
Now, let me just go ahead and say thank you to PK, I assume. Parker, Parker Columbus? No, that's with a C. Parker Callisine? Anyway, let me, this thing was put on properly. And what I mean by that is I could have actually grabbed this with my hand and probably loosened it. That's the way, I'll show you at the end of this, that's the way you need to put a filter on. And so um, that's fantastic. So we'll let this drain out for a few minutes. And then once it's dripping, then I, you know, I'm not the type, like I said, I'm, I'm an old school guy. I don't wear the gloves, the nitrile fancy group gloves. Um, and I don't have cancer yet, but I do have a mosquito in my ear. Um, but I usually just use a lot of shop rags to keep my hands clean. There we go. I think I can take this off now. Now, before we install an oil filter, I do like to wipe this surface off just in case there's any surface grime or debris. Uh, there's no reason to have this ever leak. And so wipe that off. Clean up some of this residual stuff around. Now, before putting a filter on, I want to teach you, this is a pro tip. I was taught this in school, and that is to follow directions. And so there it shows you to wipe it off. Put a little bit of oil on this seal right here, which I'll do in just a minute. Screw it on until it makes contact. Not, not tight, just until this, this makes contact with the surface. And then you turn it three-fourths of a turn, and there will be no oil leaks. Now, I've done this all my life. If you do it this way, next time you get in here to change the oil, you could probably loosen it by hand. It works that well, and it doesn't leak. Um, now my daughter picked up, you know, she's on a budget. So she went to Wally World, picked up her filter and oil. I'll put um, a couple of recommendations in the description below and you can decide which one you want to use. And so you just take a little bit of this oil, even though it's dark, it's not like it's full of grit. Put that on the surface. Doesn't take a lot, just a dabble do ya. And then we'll spin it on. Okay, see that? It just touched. Then we go quarter, half. That's a, and that's about all I can turn. Um, it does help if you don't have a little bit of oil on here. Yeah, that's it. And so oil filter is installed. Oil plug is tightened and you should have torqued it. And um, now we're going to go up top and add the oil in. One thing that I should mention as I'm opening this up is that uh, I forgot to do something I usually do, and that is to, when the filter is straight up like that, I usually like to fill it with oil before um, putting it back on. And that just minimizes the amount of time that it takes for the oil pump to fill the filter and pressurize the system. It's only a few seconds, but it can make a difference. And so I'd recommend doing that. And next I'll mention that I told my daughter to do a couple things when she bought this oil. I said, first, um, I got no problem with SuperTech. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good quality oil and it costs a lot less. I told her to do a couple things. One, even though when you look at the oil filler cap here, even though it says 5W20, you go into the Kia forums um, and different places and there's a lot of people using 5W30. Normally, I would stick to the 5W20, but again, because of the reputation of these Kia engines, um, that that just a little bit heavier weight oil um, is, is something, it's just a little bit of an insurance plan. It's a little bit of protection that you wouldn't otherwise have. And so I would recommend going with the 5W30. I'd use the high mileage, and I would definitely do synthetic. That's something synthetic oil is just so much better. And then the last tip I gave her is don't buy five quarts. Buy the five quart bottle. Don't buy five one quart bottles. You'll pay more. Buy the five quart bottle. It's almost like getting one free. All right, so I'll show you this is where I took it off the engine. Put it up here for safekeeping. Get the funnel. Now, this is uh, this engine capacity. The oil it takes is about four and a half quarts. I don't know why manufacturers do that. It doesn't matter if it's Domestic or import, there's a lot of them that will do it. So you end up with a half quart of oil, I guess, so you can stick in the trunk and uh, add a little bit later on when the engine burns it. 
And so you don't want to use all five quarts to fill it up. You don't want to overfill an engine. Sometimes that'll blow gaskets out. It can cause damage. It's not a good idea. Now most oil manufacturers put this nifty little gauge on the side. I would not trust it with my life, but you can see I've got a little bit over a half a quart in here. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Again, don't want to overfill. A little bit is not the end of the world. You just, when you're talking about adding um, too much, you know, more than a half quart, that's going to that's gonna possibly be a problem. Normally, the next thing you're going to do is check the engine oil level with the dipstick. Now, remember, I did not fill the oil filter, so that needs to get filled. That means we're going to start the engine as soon as the oil light goes off. Then we know the filter is full. We're going to shut the engine off. Wait just a minute for any engine oil that may have been pumped up to drain back down into the oil pan and then check it. So I'm going to put this cap back on and start the engine for a few seconds. All right, let's see. There we go. You shut it off. As you saw, that filter fills up really fast, just a few seconds. So I'm going to take this, wipe it off here, reinsert. Make sure it's seated all the way down and then check the oil. And actually, man, I don't do this often, but that is perfect. And so I don't know if you can see the line, it's clean oil, but uh, basically it's right on the this indentation, this little dimple right here. And so it is full right to the line. If you follow along, change your own oil, congratulations, you did a great job, and you saved yourself some money. Go treat yourself to a latte or a McDonald's or something like that, but uh, give yourself a pat on the back. I hope this video was helpful for you and informative and a little bit entertaining, uh, but I just want to say thank you for watching. Have a great day.